Welcome back, it's me, Lou, and I'm here for another action figure unboxing and review, and today I am featuring this, Masters of the Universe Buzzsaw Hordak, the ruthless leader with blaster blade. Okay, so this belongs to the Masters of the Universe Origins line, it's new for 2021, and we have the deluxe version of Hordak. So we've already seen a single release of the figure, uh, but this is the much more deluxe version. As you can see here, he has a crazy play feature where he shoots these blades out of his chest. Um, he comes with an extra hand. He comes with his crossbow, those flying discs, and an alternate head. So I'm excited to have this, and uh, let's check this out. So first off, um, the package design. Uh, I've said this in the past with the deluxe um, figures. If there's something I don't know, there's something that feels very generic about having a deluxe figure on a really large card like this in a blister. It doesn't feel premium, um, but it's a throwback, I guess, to the, you know the older style of toys where you just get the bubble on the card. And, I, I mean, for me at this point, I just have to live with it. <laughs> as much as I'd like to see, you know, maybe this figure in a box or something. And uh, although I say all the time that I love ripping the bubble off a card, I just think there's a better way they could have presented this. It just, I don't know, when I see these oversized cards, it just reminds me of, like, a toy I'd see, like, at Walgreens. Because Walgreens, they sometimes have those, like, knockoff, off-brand toys. And then they're always packaged funny. They come in giant boxes. And for some reason, that just kind of reminds me of this. Um, but on the graphic design end, I love the illustration here. I think that's really cool. It really sells me on the figure. You know, you have all these starbursts that kind of tell you what's going on. You know, modern posing, retro play, saw blade burst out of chest. You know, I'm on the back. Uh, I never tire of these images here. I love these kind of like... Um, Inspired action shots. They look really cool. Hordex Buzzsaw uh, Blast catches his enemies off guard. And then we have Battle Armor He-Man here. Uh, what strikes me as curious is that this version of He-Man isn't out yet. I um, In the Masters of the Universe Origins line. Because this one he's wearing the gold plated armor. And then he kind of has that spinning bolo weapon. Whereas the battle version here... He's in the gray silver, and he just comes with the axe and sword. So, I love these things, because I always think it's kind of a, maybe like a sneak peek or a tease of what's to come. Uh, so, modernizing and celebrating the original 80s Masters of the Universe action figures. Masters of the Universe Origins gives you the power to pose Eternia's greatest warriors as retro-style figures, or in new action-packed battle positions. And over here, it describes his play feature. You click the buzzsaw into place. And then you push down on the lever in the back. And then it shoots out. Um, warning, do not aim at your eyes or face. Only use projectiles applied with this toy. Do not fire at point blank range. So yeah, I'm excited about this. Now as a child, I'd probably lose. <laughs> I'd probably lose these like throwing blades like after the first day. Um, so I kind of wish they'd give me more than just two, but, you know, that's how it is. So over here, we have Castle Grayskull. Um, I reviewed that in a previous video. I've never seen this in the stores. I know that some people, have, you know, have actually seen this in the wild at Walmart. Unfortunately, I've never seen it. Um, and if I did, in all honesty, I'd buy another one. This is a great play set. There's the Wind Raider. That's out. Um, I haven't seen that in the wild either. Um, my buddy JC saw it. And then here's the other figures in the assortment. Uh, we have Battle Armor He-Man, Battle Armor Skeletor. I still need this guy. I've been putting him off. And then we have Buzzsaw Hordak. All right, the moment of truth. All right, it's, I'm already <laughs> I'm already losing one of these blades. It's kind of falling out of the package. Let's open it up upside down. All right, I'm gonna set these aside. Uh, with a comic book, the extra hand, which I'm probably going to lose, uh, the figure, 
crossbow. And the alternate portrait. Okay, let's lay everything out. We have the figure here. We have the comic book. Um, there's the little kind of pseudo instructions where it kind of shows you what goes on. We have that. We'll set that aside. We have the head. Um, the two throwing blades. An extra hand. And the crossbow. So, I think for your money, you're getting your, I think for your dollar, you're getting your money's worth on this guy. Very impressed with what I see so far. Um, with the instructions, so they kind of go through the process of how to, you know, play with the, the chest blasting feature. So you open up the chest, I guess there's a button here on the back. You insert the throwing disc, so you click the buzzsaw into place. Uh, then when you push down on the lever, it launches it. And like other Origins figures, you can swap body parts. And it shows you here what, what you can remove. You can swap out the arms. You can swap out the head. The figure detaches at the waist. You can swap out the boots. And if you're willing to go the distance, you can actually even swap the legs out. Um, you just need to submerge the lower half of the figure into like uh, hot water. And then it'll soften up the plastic in the legs. And you can actually just like pop these off. All right, we'll set that aside. Uh, the comic book, Masters of the Universe, The Horde Plague. This one has a lot of words. <laughs> I'm, I'm so bad. I'm, it's almost like when I was a kid, and it's very ironic because I love comic books, and I probably read like close to like 50 comic books a month. But I can't be bothered to read these Masters of the Universe comics for some reason. I guess I'm just more about the toys. I, I guess this one afternoon I'll just sit down and I'll take all the little comic books and just read them. It's pretty neat though. I mean, I'm glad they provide it, but I don't know. I'm just kind of very backwards like that. Okay, there, that looks awesome. All right, so first impressions of the action figure while it's in the tray. Um, looks cool. I gotta compare it with the, the first release though, because I'm not sure, like, I know that the chest here has that um, gimmick where it shoots the missile out, but I don't know if aesthetically if he's any different than the first release. You know, I don't know if they've changed, like, um, his body armor or his design at all. But right off the right off the bat, I'm liking what I, I'm seeing here. So we have the figure here. All right, so before we get into the um, the chest blasting gimmick, let's take a look at this other portrait here. So we have two different ver two different heads. Um, I kind of like this one a, a little bit more. He looks a little bit more mischievous, like he's conspiring. This head looks a little bit frustrated, a little bit angry. It's cool that they give you an extra head like this. You know, even if you don't use it on this figure, um, you, you know, maybe you could swap it out on the first release figure, or maybe use it as a custom and create a new version of Hordak using a different body from another character. I'm glad they give us another hand, um, you know, with the C-grip. Uh, I prefer the C-grips as opposed to, like, the splayed-out hands. You know, unless the character is, like, a magic wielder or if he comes with a shield, um, I'm more likely to swap out the splayed-out hands and this use the, the C-grip. He has the little bicep thing here, that little kind of, like, 
I don't know, um, armband. It's kind of falling down, so let's pop it back up. There we go. Uh, so these discs, are they, they're not identical. They're a little bit different. Uh, this one kind of has, all right, so they both have this, like, Hordak symbol um, sculpted onto it. This one kind of res resembles more of, like, a Starburst. It, it almost looks kind of like a weird gear. Uh, this one looks, this is more of, like, a, uh, a saw blade. As you can see, it's a lot sharper, has more rays around it. And there's like a metal piece on the inside. Okay. The crossbow, I believe it's the same crossbow as the one we got before. Um, and the way this works, you just... So there's a tab here and a notch there. You put this here and then you just press down. Uh, you press down on this and it sh kind of shoots out just a little. Uh, figure wise, okay, so I have the um, original release with me. Let's take, let's compare them real quick. Okay, so here's the first release figure, and then here's the newer one. Um, oh wow, I didn't, I didn't notice that. So there is a difference in the heads. Um, the head sculpts are the same, but the the execution of the paint's different. So they're the exact same head sculpts, but if you look here. The bags under his eyes are colored black, and then the entire eye is colored red. Versus this, where the bags under his eye remains unpainted, but the actual eye is painted black, but then the pupils are dotted red on the inside. So we're actually getting two different heads here. So altogether, you have three different expressions for Hordak. So you have the kind of like conspiring mischievous one. Um, uh, this one looks angry and f maybe a little bit frustrated. This one looks angry and a little bit more focused. So it's it's cool. At first I thought this, you know, this head was going to be the same as this one. But it's nice that, you know, a subtle change in the paint application creates a new expression. Uh, in terms of the color scheme, um, they're identical. Uh, the silvers look to be the same. The grays are the same. Uh, the boots and the arms and the legs though, are the same. Um, so what's going to be different about this figure is that if you look, all right, so this is the standard Origins body, but there's the clip-on armor. You see there's the tab, and this armor can actually be removed. Whereas this one, uh, the armor is not removable, and the upper torso, is chest, and his abdomen is actually um, a mechanized piece. And there's the, the cape up here is the trigger. And if you look close enough the sculpting on the Hordak bat symbol is actually different um, on both of them it's larger on the original figure than this one and that makes sense though because this one has to be smaller because there's the hinges towards the waist for the fold-out gimmick and uh, let's see how that works so for this figure you open up the chest there's a little tab um, right there so you put your nail, fingernail underneath it, pull it out, and then you open up this chest compartment, and then you can inst you go put in one of these saw blades, and then close this down so it clicks. Did I do that right? Um, let me double check. So I'm unsure if you need to have this. All right. Okay, so if you want to shoot this out, I'm assume I. From my understanding, I'm assuming you have to have this open all the time. Uh, when you press this, I don't think this flips open. Um, you have to manually open this beforehand. And then when you press on this lever here, it shoots out the um, that little uh, throwing blade kind of deal. Let me get this in. All right, so you, all right, it's supposedly clicked into place. That's not working. I have such bad luck with some of these gimmicks on the Masters of the Universe figures. Alright, it says you install it until it clicks. Okay, I got it right. So once it's clicked in, you can see how far it goes into his chest cavity. And then when you press this. Alright, so. Does this work? 
Oh wow, that comes up. Uh, all right. I'm kind of curious if you go. All right. So I I think that you could do it with the chest closed, but just don't close the tabs in all the way. Oh, let's see if that'll work. No, it doesn't work. Yeah, so you have to keep the chest completely open in order for the blade to shoot out completely. It's kind of unfortunate. I was kind of hoping that it'd be much more um, kind of like a hidden surprise where, you know, they'd spring load this door so that when you press this, this actually forces open and shoots out. It's almost kind of disappointing that you have to open this first in order for it to blast. But the force of this projectile, it's really good. So, you know, it does what it's supposed to do, and uh, it's very impressive. I just kind of wish this would pop open when you press the button down. It doesn't seem like much of a surprise if he's walking up to, like, Skeletor or He-Man with his chest out, and this thing clearly pointed at them. Um, so let's try it one more time. Yeah, so it shoots out really fast. Very impressed with that. Okay, so um, let's compare it with the... Actually, I actually have the Super 7 figure here also. So we have the first release. We have the Deluxe figure, the first release um, Origins figure. And then we have the Super 7 figure, which is kind of based off more of the animation model. That's why he looks like this. Oh man, so if I had to ch Oh wait, give me a moment, I'll be back in a second. I have another Hordak figure. Alright, I have this guy also. Um, I've showed this guy before in other videos. So this was... Um, I want to say it was made by the Four Horsemen back in the early 2000s. And I think this came out after um, Mattel ended the Masters of the Universe 2000 X line. So there were characters that never got made in the 2000 X line. And I think it was NECA and uh, in collaboration with the Four Horsemen. Uh, that's a toy, stu toy designing studio. They kind of uh, made these like miniature statues. And they were into scale with the, with the Mattel 2000 X line, but they're not articulated. But the the way they're sculpted and their anatomy and their design is very much in line with the 2000 X line. So they made like Clawful and they made this Hordak, which I like a lot. Um, it's a, it's a really crazy interpretation of the character. It borders lines on like having very like anime inspired proportions, but this like kind of that like uh, McFarlane like detail on sculpting that we saw in the late 90s and early 2000s. This one, though, I had to fix up because it was missing an arm. It was missing this forearm, and it was missing the flap in the front, so I kind of had to uh, get those off another figure. So these aren't, this piece here and this piece here aren't original. But it, if you didn't know any, any better, you'd think it was the real thing. So yeah, this is a great Hordak figure. Um, so yeah, we could throw this in the pile of the Hordak comparisons. Unfortunately, I don't have the original Hordak from the 80s. Um, I think by then... When Hordak came out, um, I was kind of like already kind of exiting like toys. I think I was starting to be more preoccupied with like video games and computer games. But I did watch a cartoon. Hordak's always been one of my favorite villains. Um, I just loved the way he looks. He's really cool. So yeah, here's all these different Hordaks. Um, this is always going to be, I think, my favorite just because I love the design of it. Uh, I was excited about the Super 7 ones when they first came out, but looking back at them now, the quality, it's its okay. It's, it's, I mean, it's in line with the original toys. Yeah, but there are some changes, like, you know, they got rid of the bands between the legs. Um, and I'm glad I have it. I mean, it, it scales well with the Origin figures, but I just really love the Origin figures in terms of the articulation and the, you know, the modern engineering. I'm hoping at some point that Mattel gives us, like, the animated versions of, you know, the characters, but using the Origins bodies. I mean, I'd like to see that. I'm not sure if that's ever going to happen, though. 
All right, so if I had to rate uh, this guy numerically on a scale of 1 to 10, uh, oh, man, I'd probably easily give him an 8. Um, an 8 at the highest, 7.5 at the lowest. If you don't have this guy, um, I think this guy is worth the purchase. If you had to choose between these two, I'd more likely, in all honesty, probably go with this one. Uh, mostly because the gimmick, it's, you know... Most of the time with action figures and gimmicks, there's something that kind of makes it... It's almost like... Um, it doesn't feel like the original figure because it feels very gimmicky. This, on the other hand, it kind of still retains the same aesthetic as this. It's not like Battle Armor He-Man where Battle Armor He-Man looks completely different than this like, standard He-Man. You know, he's wearing different armor. It has a weird gimmick to it. From a distance, you know, if you're like six feet away, these almost look like identical figures. And this does a really great job of disguising his play feature. Um, unless you look carefully, you, you know, you're not going to notice the hinge here. Or even the lever on the back that holds his cape. So, the added value is also with the extra head and the extra hand. Um, I think that's awesome. And the play feature, I think, is actually really cool. I, of the three uh, deluxe figures that have play features in that line... You know, there's the He-Man and the Skeletor with the, the battle-damaged armor. I think this dude, for me anyways, is uh, a little bit more... I don't know. I think the idea of him shooting out a missile is a lot cooler than this He-Man's armor just, like, flipping around. So for me, if I had to choose between these two, you know, just get the deluxe one if you don't have this one already. But if you do have this one, I still think you should get this one just for the other head and the other hand. So yeah, uh, he's a must purchase. Um, I don't think your your collections, <laughs> your origins collections, complete unless you have this guy. Because everything about him, like it, the gimmick, it, I don't think it deters from the figure in any way. If anything, it really enhances the figure. So yeah, I mean, it doesn't even, it doesn't even bother me that there's this elongated thing that holds the cape in place. Because when you view the figure from the front, you don't really notice it, and from the side, it's there, but it's not too distracting. So yeah, get this figure. It's awesome. Wonderful, wonderful toy. So wrapping this up, uh, once, again, <clears throat> once again, my name is Lou. Um, if you're new to my channel, thanks for checking this out. If you're a returning subscriber or viewer, thanks again for your support. I appreciate the views, the comments, and the likes. So until the next time, take care of yourselves and enjoy your toys. I'll talk to you later.